Hey, I'm Mark with Affordable Solar Frames, and today I'm going to show y'all how to do it yourself and build your own solar panel using our system. Uh, this is a finished product. This one I took off my personal solar array. It's a couple of years old. When you buy one of our kits, we offer them all different sizes. It will come packaged like this. Um, it's inch and a half aluminum, eighth inch thick. Real simple to put together. The glass we use is quarter inch clear tempered. It's got a um, 100 mile an hour wind load on it. Uh, we'll, we sell this smaller size glass one at a time or two at a time or with the frame assembled in a box like that. All the other size frames, glass that we offer, I have to ship by freight because they're so big. Um, or you can just buy the frames and buy and get your own glass locally. You should be able to go to your own uh, local glass company and they should be able to order this glass for you. Uh, or you can use plexiglass, just don't use the thin plexiglass. You want to go with quarter inch. The, the thin plexiglass will warp in the sun. It looks bad and it'll crack your cells. So I recommend uh, at least quarter inch thickness. I'm going to show you all how to assemble this thing starting with the frame and we'll go right through soldering and a complete panel. When you assemble your your frame you don't want to bolt it together first. You want to just lay your pieces like they would go. I have a hole in my table it just makes it so much easier to to be able to lower the glass in and see what you're doing when you're soldering and encapsulating. Uh, first thing I do is once I, I lay it out, I use 100% silicone, 50-year um, warranty. Everything we're doing, I want it to last 30 years or more. So we don't cut any corners, don't skimp, try to get by with something that's uh, going to last five years and then you're out. You want to just lay a, a pretty heavy bead here and be very generous with it. I'll get my cameraman to zoom in on this a little bit. You want to put down plenty of silicone. You need to be kind of quick with it because it will form a skin on it. <clears throat> Once you have it like so, then you simply lay the glass. And this hole makes this process so much easier. When you lay it in, don't worry about getting it perfect. And we'll simply Take our clips, one goes in each corner, you get four extras, they're mounting brackets, they will, they'll bolt on like so, and you can mount it to your own array. And there's four little clips that help hold the glass in, they're also siliconed in. And we have a good mount on it, and just set it right where the holes are. stainless steel bolts and lock nuts and you simply just slide them from the, uh, the outside in all the holes match up you get a perfect connection every time don't worry about getting the glass perfectly centered we're going to do that in a minute
right, now that you've got it, all your screws and stuff in place, we're simply going to tighten them up. I just eyeball everything, make sure it looks right. And use a cordless drill. sure the glass is just centered up it still will slide around and you've got about a 3 16th to uh, gap all the way around that's about what you're looking for now the next step we're going to do is, is give this glass a quick cleaning and we'll start assembling the cells again I just use Windex cells I buy uh, for this particular um, panel we're making are three by six cells we also use five by five inch cells and six by six inch cells we also make custom frames um, cells I buy, I don't cut any corners, uh, it's a three by six, they'll come like so and packaged in bundles. These are grade A cells, 1.8 watts. You can buy these cells that are 1 point or 0.2 watts and, and a half a watt. Uh, why go to the trouble of building a panel that's going to be uh, inferior by buying a cheap wadded cell. So you get them, they look like so. Don't worry about getting fingerprints and stuff on them. They'll, they clean off real easy. You get um, tabbing wire and it comes packaged like so. You wrap it around a piece of cardboard like so and you take your scissors and you cut them and it automatically makes it the perfect length for you. I simply lay my tabbing wire down and I use the weight to hold the tabbing wire and then I simply slide my line the, uh, the cell under it. I use this CL Flux. Um, I like it the best. The, the pins that you can use are kind of messy and hard to clean. I've got this little tool I made. It's a little dentist tool. I bent it to look like so. It comes real handy. I just dip it in there and there's a drop hanging on it and you just run it down that tabbing wire. It will discolor the cell a little bit but it wipes right off. And we'll line it up at the bottom here so we get the length right. And you take a good soldering iron. It's uh, just a 30 watt weller. And the glass underneath helps absorb a lot of the heat so that you don't uh, put too much heat into the cell. And the solder, I can feel it melting and it slides easy when it's melted. If it's not melted, then the uh, soldering iron has trouble moving forward. So, kind of a no-brainer. And if it doesn't work first time, just heat it up and do it again. But um, that's about it of tabbing. You do one on the other side 36 times and you just sit down and um, listen to the ball game and tab them up. To clean them, I simply spray a little Windex with a paper towel and you just wipe it. And you'll never know that it was ever touched.
I have some that are already tabbed up and ready. And I'm going to show you how to take. And uh, we'll start here. We're going to go four rows of nine in this particular panel. Basically, I take these weights to hold everything in place. And I'm uh, starting about a half inch. Three-eighths of an inch from the end and off the edge. And you just lay one next to the other. And uh, it's just a matter of eyeballing them. It's, a lot of people will use spacers. Uh, I don't see the point. These cells, they're not the same size. One's a little different than the next. So eyeballing them has just worked out so much better. I'll go ahead and get all nine of them lined up and just use weights to hold them in place. And then you'll solder the back of them. Again, I use the flux. Take a drop, stick on each little dot. This little tool is really handy. I'll, uh, <clears throat> I like to add a little bit of solder. You can do it without adding solder, but <clears throat> if you solder nine of them, one of them is not going to be connected. And, uh, and don't panic because you can go back and fix them. I'll do the center one first. And I'll move to the next one. And do the center and do the center. And that lets it cool off a little bit because your cells will warp like a potato chip if you get them too hot. And this little tool, I can hook under there and see if it's connected or not. Again, you got to do this. All 36 cells. Once you get them all connected, four rows of nine, um, you will have to bust them together and I'll show you that on my I've got a complete panel that we can look at that we're fixing to encapsulate